do now is to find out how you see it, and then we're going to see how science sees it, and then we're going to come back and say, how do we see it as far as the health of C. pleasant? So that's the rhythm of what we're going to do. So let's begin, and here's my uh, colleague over here, Brad Palick. He works for the University of Maryland Extension. And uh, first of all, we're not going to raise our hands. A while ago, I did an exercise, raise your hands. And that's what we usually did back before we had any kind of technology. So we'd say, okay, get your hands up, hold them up high enough so I can count, right? And you've done that some. And so then we try to get a count, and it's really important to more than one person counting it so we can verify, yes, we all came up with the same answer. Today we're going to use a piece of electronic technology. It's called clicker technology. Well, actually it's called audience response system, but people just call it clicker. Because you make one little press and it clicks and we get an answer. So um, let's see, ma'am, a while ago you were getting a lesson on this. Do you feel comfortable enough in telling the group what it is you're going to do with this? No? And then you were talking with her about it. Are you willing to tell the group what to do? You simply push the button to uh, answer the question. And, and there's going to be a, a, a correlation between, if it's number one, you push number one, right? Yeah. And then you should see a green light come on. That means your piece of equipment is working. If we don't, we've got backup pieces, right, Brad? And so especially on this first test question, we're going to need to know that from you. All right? So, yes, ma'am. What? You didn't get one. Oh, here's my clicker people. Here, here, here. You can do this. You, you can multitask. Does anyone else not have one? Everybody got one? They're not all exactly alike. Some of them are in lanyards and in little plastic, but they're all basically, they work on the same piece of software. In case some of you are interested, there's software, the brains behind this, that's going to do something for us. It's going to collect your response, and we can actually do some data analysis of the response to make some sense of it. So let's get started with an exercise. Here's your warm-up exercise. Let's find out what your favorite DC sports team is. Yeah, and you got to pick one. Some of you are fans, and it doesn't matter. You don't have to point it anywhere. It's not radioactive. So when you push the button, numbers one through six, whichever one button you push, you should see a nice greenish light stay on for like two or three seconds. And if you want to look up here, you'll see polling is open. You're still got a chance to answer. We've got 98 responses so far, but we're about to close this. So you need to do this, yeah, uh, get your vote in. Did everyone see a yellow light when you, a Anyone? green light when you push yeah. it? Yes. Anyone not? Anyone have only a yellow light? That meant yours wasn't working. There you go. Did you see a nice, sort of greenish yellow light, right? Green, green light. Yeah. Green. All right? Okay. All right. All right, let's close those polls. 103 responses. And we see all the
is uh, identified as a high school student, 27% as an older adult, and 9% as other. Percentages are a way of showing a proportion, an amount. If you have 100, we'd line up, or 10, let's say 10, we would have about six of you would be high school students. Slight, no, you know, 2.7, so we have to decide. Is it two or is it seven? Since it's over five, we'd say it was two. And uh, then less than one, and those, that would add up to 10. We would make it add up to 10, right? So that's what percentages are, are about. We can also show you in numbers, and some of these there you would have, of course, because it's 100% and you only have one choice. It forced you into that, right? So let's go to the next slide, please. Now, you have to make a judgment. This is a measure that is used by scientists to find out what your health condition is. You have to decide if you think your health is excellent, very good, good, fair, or poor. So pick one through five and show us your state of health. We've got 80 people coming up, jumping right up to 85. They're not having too much problem deciding their health. They're 92. Let's bump this up over 100. Six, ten, and watch. That's not silent. Silent. Three seconds, buddy? Yeah. Oh, come on. Come on. Mrs. 98, let's get that 100. Who hasn't punched in your health? All right, let's start closing the poll. Three, two, one. Let's see. So, within this room, we have. The, mo the largest amount of you believe that you are either good or very good, followed by fair, then by excellent, and then a few of you whose health you would say was poor. You probably had to be in fairly good health to get up and get out and get here today. So the 4% of you that think your health is pretty poor, wow, it was good enough for you to get here today. That's pretty amazing. Uh, this, is, this is a standard question that is often asked to find out about population health. So if this is the whole population of this room today, we now know something about your health. Let's move to the next one. Now, um, science takes a look at population health. That's what public health is about. And looked, the, looked at the health of adults in Maryland. And now we want to find out, we know what percent of you rated your health as poor or fair. Let's find out how many, if they were adults, they were in this study. What percent do you think represents those across the Mar uh, Maryland who said their health was fair or poor? Which one of those best represents the percentage of adults in Maryland whose health is fair or poor according to their response? This is a judgment call. It's a little harder for you. We're asking you all to do that. We're going to move into closing the poll. And the answer is 13. You change. Okay. Let me tell you, Demonte, go with your first. You'll succeed in college if you go with your first answer. More times. More times than not. Don't second guess yourself. But anyway. So 13% of the state of Maryland was rating themselves as fair or poor. You're actually a little healthier if you can remember back. All 4% was poor. You had a much higher percent in um, fair health. That would be the kind of analysis we could do. We're not going to get into that now. We're going to move on to another one. And but 25 of them have got that one correct. And 25 of you got that correct. The majority of you thought it would be a little bit higher. <laughs> All right, now we want you to think about the physical activity level of the students at either Fairmont, let's see hands on Fairmont, how many are here from Fairmont, because we can ask that question. Central, okay, yes, okay. Now, putting your two schools together as a population, so you're thinking about all the students at both schools, Everyone in this room is thinking about it. Do you think those students are getting a physical activity level that is better than recommended, at the recommended level, less than recommended, or you just don't know? Okay. 
So answers are coming in. We're moving up from the 80s now. Keep on going. All right, we can close the poll. We're getting very close to 100. We're about to end this. All right. We, your guess is, or your thinking is, that some 20% of the, your, uh, the students at these two schools are doing better. 33%, uh, like a third out of 100, that'd be 33 out of 100, uh, are at. 28% are less, and 20% of you say, I don't know. Now, this sets up a situation that says this knowledge may be, gone, be beyond us. I mean, even though we have a majority of you here, or we have a 33% of you saying it's at that range in there, are you right? Do you know? Do, do we know for sure that your opinion is correct? No. It would take scientists to tell us that we have to go out and do some kind of measurement. So probably the most honest answer is, I don't know. I just don't know. I'm only speculating. I'm guessing. And science is not a guess. You put out a guess, and then you go test it. That's what science is. So let's move on. Let's find out about the older adults. Thinking about all the older adults that are out there in your community, do you think they're getting better than the recommended level of physical activity? They're at the recommended level, less than, or you don't know. Now, just because a while ago I said, well, you could say, I don't know. I'm not forcing you to that direction. I'd like for you to make a judgment. Just how healthy, I mean, how physically active do you think the seniors are? Uh, we're moving along. We're as much like it up in the 90s. We're going to be in the close the poll. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Poll closed. Let's see what you thought. <laughs> ah, you're thinking that less than half of them are getting their potential activity. Well, I'm going to let you in on a hint. If you didn't learn this in your session, the truth of the matter is that the vast majority of all of us are below what's recommended. The vast majority of us are. Right? Even if you're young compared to being older, even for your own age group and your ability, most of us tend to be less physically active than is recommended. So we're kind of in this together. Let's move on. Now, here's a question that science sees it. And all of these next five are based on your session that you just came from. So you probably ought to be able to answer this. As science sees it, is this statement true or false? So this is a different way of answering than you've done so far. You're trying to figure out if what is said here is true or not. I'm sorry. Go ahead and re, uh, redo your answers. I, I clicked when I should have Okay. So the question or the statement is: Scientists found that people who said their health was fair or poor also said they did not do any physical activity or exercise in the past 30 days. Both. So let's see what you think. Is that a true or false statement? Scientists say. Are we doing? We're only up to 80 of you. Just a little bit more. Let's push 90 down. We're going to close the poll. And we see that 60% of you think it's true, 40% of you think it's false. It is a true statement. So there is what we would call a relationship between the level of your health, your general health, and the level of your physical activity. And it's a relationship that shows that the lower your level of physical activity, the lower your general health. It's another way of saying we know those two things go together. All right, let's try another as science sees it. Uh, this is about diabetes. You were in a session about that. So read through all of these statements. Decide which of these are true. The question before, I understand the relationship between the two, but couldn't it be that you're not active because they're unhealthy as opposed to they're unhealthy because they're not active? We don't there know is much that we could get into to discuss on all I mean, these. Right? And, and, and shouldn't the question have said regular physical activity? Because the person could exercise one time and that's activity. It said recommend. So if you don't mind, we're not going to get into the discussion of all that right now. The point is we're looking at what science and what data could tell us or not. 
but you're absolutely right. You have to understand what was being asked. Let's bring this to a close. We need people to vote. Please draw the vote. Oh. And uh, which of them is true? Yeah. And the correct answer is they're all true. Yes. They're all true. Hopefully you pick that up in your in your uh, in your diabetes class. But the point is that your age, race, education, and income all have an effect on the likelihood that you might have diabetes. But we'll move on to the next question. High blood pressure. We've got a session on high blood pressure. Look at these factors. These are things that can affect whether or not you have high blood pressure, high blood pressure. Which ones do you think are true? Uh, how are we doing on polling? Let's hit it up there in the 80s, and I'm going to call it now. Please begin to close the poll. And once again, yes, all of them are true. You should have heard about all of them in the session where you were. So this is reinforcing what you probably heard before. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, the percent of adults who eat five or more servings of fruits and vegetables every day is what percent of, a, of adults are eating five or more servings of fruits and vegetables a day at a more recommended base? Your answers are coming in. We've got to have one more time here, Greg. Okay, we're up to the 90s now. I'm going to begin to close this. And the answer is, what did you say? Um, your, most of you think it's 10%, followed by 27%. So you've got almost, you go down. Uh, and the an oops, and the answer is that it is 27% uh, of adults are getting enough fruits and vegetables every day. If I had shown you the teen one, the same problem. So we have only a small amount of our population getting enough fruits and vegetables every day. Let's move on. Is this statement true or false? One more true and false. That getting and living with sexually transmitted diseases is a challenge for teens and older adults. Yes. Uh, keep those votes coming. Okay, I'm calling it now. Hold the close. And we find that 87% of you think it's true, 13% think it's false, and the answer is that it is true. It's a challenge for both older adults and teenagers. It's not just a youth problem. All right, let's move on. Now, the point of all of that was to show you a little bit, reinforce what you learned, show you how data can be used. Let's move on now and use data in a different way. This is where we're now going to look at what you learned here today and take action back in your community to improve your health, your family's health, and that of your community. So what we've done here is give you five options, all based on the five sessions that you just went to. There could be others, but for today, we're giving you these five. Could be options for action back in the community. Let's find out what your priorities are. So if we could go to the next one, please. As you see it, for teenage health, so now we're thinking all about the teenagers back in the community, what is the number one priority you think ought to be addressed in your community to improve the health of teenagers? You have five options and you have a six, which is none of those. You think it's something else. And this is for everyone in the room. To, to speak to the older adults who want your opinions as well as um, the high school students. Only pick one. We're forcing you to one. There are times when you can do uh, an activity where you can compare and begin to find out the prior, but right now, for the purposes of time, we're doing one. You're just going to find out the one that stands out if anyone does. We're up almost to 90. Let's get the rest of those folks coming in here. Let's vote. All right, let's go to the poll. And the answer is 
Well, we have a slightly over a third of you think that physical activity ought to be focused on for, for teenagers. That's followed by sexual health, and then these others are all much smaller over here. So this is the value of your opinion now, because you're citizens of the community. And this is what you see, you think, ought to be addressed. Now let's look at the same question, but we're going to flip who it is. We're going to say for older adults. Which of these are the most important? And you also, again, have a nun. So thinking about the older adults of your community, which priority do you think should be addressed for older adults? Only about half of you. Please make your choice. Remember, this is an exercise, not a final decision-making process. If we were doing final decisions, we'd spend a little more time on it. Uh, okay, I'm about ready to call. We need you to tonight. vote. Please now, vote. vote. We need your sure. opinions. We're only at 89. We know there's a lot more of you in this room. Okay, we're at 90. We're going to close the polls. Let's see how this turns out. Ah, interesting. We're not quite as clear on that. We don't have one that just stands out great. They hover.